and our presenter this afternoon is Elder Vernon Bates, a very dear friend of mine that I've known for almost 18 years. And we will begin to give you an introduction in regards to the Alan G. White books and the estate, Prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. But at this time, we'd like to invite everybody to kneel and have a word of prayer, those that are able. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you. And we thank you for the gift of prophecy that you've given to us. We ask for your blessings. We ask for a spirit of interpretation and understanding. We ask for a spirit of discernment. And we ask your blessings on Elder Vernon Bates. Blessing. And we claim the coals and the altar of incense that you place them on his tongue. And we are a people of unclean lips. And we ask for your blessings upon him and his voice. And most of all, we claim Isaiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 My brother Richard, we uh, we like to say we uh, we like to say that we are not an independent ministry. That's that's not our goal at all. Uh, we uh, we have um, get discovered some discrepancies in the writings of Ellen White, and our discrepancies have turned out to be uh, intentional, not by 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 Sister White, but by the po folks that have handled these books. Uh, I, I write, like to stress again that we are simply not an independent ministry. Uh, we are book people. That's all we are. Amen. And we are uh, uh, we are trying to interest people, uh, God's people, in the in the original message. Uh, I uh, I'm going to use several little books here. Uh, uh, I'll try to use as many of the original books as I can. Uh, we have here uh, the Great Controversy books. Uh, I'll, I'll hand you one of these if you, you want to look at them here. Uh, these are uh, in a sequence. Uh, 1911, uh, maybe I'd better turn that and we can see them. Uh, 1911, uh, 1888, uh, Australian, uh, 1888 or 1887, Australian, and the 85 or 6 and 85 and 84. Uh, that's probably the best collection that I have ever seen uh, in a sequence. It wasn't too long ago uh, on the internet, somebody offered a million dollars for an original 1858 Great Controversy. Now we have uh, an original 1858 Great Controversy. Uh, I wouldn't part with it for $10 million. Uh, uh, another person here about three years ago came and uh, wanted to buy all our, our, our duplicate copies. Uh, of course we wouldn't sell them. Uh, that's not our business. Our business is reproduction, and uh, we can't good do it uh, uh, like cloth binding, but we can do it with uh, uh, with the, uh, the printer with uh, uh, the perfect mind, uh, the uh, cloth, the, uh, the uh, uh, what am I trying to say, the paper by backs. Uh, <coughs> the the, uh, the construction of these books uh, is astronomical. Uh, if you've read, uh, for instance, this is The Life of Paul. Uh, Life of Paul was published about 1883. And uh, if you look on The Life of Paul, I'm hoping that you can see it. Uh, you see the orange color there? Uh, those are uh, sentences and paragraphs that are removed from the book. 
Now, the book they, they, they did was uh, Acts the Apostles. Right. So mm -hmm. this, this uh, you see the, the amount of uh, changes that are in, in the book. So when you read Acts the Apostles, you're not giving a true story. And I'll give you an illustration there. You see, it's just pages and pages and pages of the books as, uh, as they came from the, the press, uh, mm -hmm. how they have been changed. Uh, you hear uh, a lot of the ministers will say, the books haven't been changed. Well, you know, I don't think I've ever met a minister that really read the books. Uh, the minister that baptized me, three months after he, uh, we were introduced into the church, in my absence, he made a, um, he came to my home when I was working and made a pass on my wife. Uh, it, it almost threw us out of the church. My, my, when I came home from work that night, uh, my wife, she's she, she, she so nervous. She says, you'll never guess what Elder Schultz did. And I, she, I, she told me, uh, I, I was just horrified. Uh, we soon found out that Elder Schultz had never read Sir Frederick Posse books. Uh, he had some of them, but he never read those books. And he would have known the, the difficulty he had. Uh, it was years and years later. He did come up on my home, and uh, he, uh, my books were in, in the library there. And he says, uh, who's, who's, who's are those books? I said, they're my books. He says, you don't have any right to have them. They belong to the church. No, I said, I bought them. And, uh, and I said, you have them? Well, I, I, I have some of them. Uh, I said, uh, uh, have you read them? Uh, well, no, pieces of them. And I said, well, I thought so. You have not read the testimonies. You have not read the spirit of prophecy, and you're no authority. Now, look what I find here. I, and and uh, it's on page 325, and I'll read the top paragraph. Uh, this, of course, has been removed. God has declared his will, and it is absolute madness for men to change or even question that which has gone out of his lips. That has been removed. It's madness. It's, it's absolutely madness what, what has happened. Uh, a number of years ago, a friend of mine was in Sacramento, California, and there was a big e effort held in, uh, uh, in uh, let's see, it was, uh, uh, I, I forgot the name of the air base. Uh, Lackland, I think, Air Base in Sacramento, and uh, uh, they had resulted about 35 baptisms. Well, my friend went to the uh, the baptism, and uh, the evangelist, as he spoke and introduced the people to the church, he said, the first lips, he, uh, words out of his lips, he says, I don't want you new people to let these older Adventists hit you over the head with these red books. And right in, right on the bat, about the bat, he destroyed the influence that Sister White would have had on, on, on those books. Mercy. So, you see, uh, if, if you've read uh, the new books, yeah, and you haven't had an old book to compare, uh, you, you'll never recognize these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's, let's use this book. This is the book Acts of the Apostles, and it's on page 33. Now, Acts of the Apostles actually was the, the, uh, the result of the uh, change, the, the sketches from the life of Paul. Now, here's what it says. <coughs> I'm on page 33, and it's on paragraph 2. As in the pit, typical service, the high priest laid aside his pontifical robes and officiated in a white linen dress of an ordinary priest. So Christ laid aside his royal robes and garbed himself with humanity and offered sacrifice, himself the priest, himself the victim. Now, do we realize that Christ was not priest on earth? Do we realize that he wasn't a priest after he went back to heaven? And the Father at the inauguration took, took, took place 
10 days uh, after he ascended when he was inaugurated as, as high priest. And you know, they, they say that thing in the, in the same book. Listen to what it says. Christ's ascension to heaven was a signal that his followers were to receive the promised blessing for they were to wait before they entered upon their work. When Christ passed within the heavenly gates, he was enthroned amidst the adoration of the angels. As soon as this ceremony was complete, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in rich currents, and Christ was indeed glorified, even with a glory he, which he had with the Father from all eternity. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the, uh, the Redeemer's inauguration was accomplished. According to his promise, he had sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to his followers as a token that he had as priest and king received all the authority in heaven and on earth and was the anointed one over his people. Mm -hmm. So we see that there's two different stories in the same book. Uh, first he was priest and king, then it, 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 later on he was inaugurated as priest. You, can you see what happens? Mm -hmm. uh, when people lo lose uh, their, uh, their enthusiasm and their uh, 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 admiration for inspiration. I know I would have. Uh, the first book I got was, uh, uh, was given me was Early Writings. And I have, I still have that copy. Now, I just wore it out. <laughs> but the second book I got was Spiritual Gifts, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When I read Spiritual Gifts book Volume 1, which is the 50-acre controversy, immediately I found there's, there's discrepancies in the two books. Whoa. And there, it, it, I'll tell you, <laughs> I went right to the church leaders, and I said, I'm finding discrepancies in these books. No, no, Sister White authorized these changes. No, 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 she couldn't have done that because she, she, she wrote it, that's what it was to be. Uh, uh, a few weeks later, uh, I don't think he even had a church meeting. Uh, when we went to Sabbath school, they, they barred the door and wouldn't let us in and say, you're not, you're in your books and you're not welcome in the church anymore. So we was out on our own. Uh, we have tried other organizations, but uh, it's the same thing. They're using the same books that the church is using, and we're not simply not getting a message. <clears throat> uh, let's 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 take one phenomenon thing here. I'm going to deal with uh, uh, Spirit of Prophecy one. Have I got it there? I sure appreciate yeah, that three. I'm. I sure appreciate your help here. I, I don't think I got it. I think I left it. Yeah. I think I left it in the other room. Uh, yeah, it's two. Uh, <clears throat> Would you like me to grab that? Would you like to grab that? Uh, you can get it and my, pull my drawer out there, uh, and, and it's Spirit Frosty Book One. Yeah, it's about uh, the second or th third row back. I thought I had them all, but I, I didn't I didn't get them. So this is number two. Is this number two? Yeah. Yeah, number two, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are, um turn along, turn along. I cannot see this one. That's number three. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, that's number three, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's number three. I I left number two there. Let me see. I'm going to get prophets. Do I have prophets and kings out here? Does our babies prophets and kings? No. Well, Richard, did you find the book? Christ of the Come up in the 
time. Solo ponele aquí, stop. Stop. No, solo ponerlo en... All right, we're going to just draw a little, a, little, a little illustration here to see if what we can find. Uh, I'm going to use a spiritual, a Spirit of Prophecy Book uh, 1. And let me see if I can get, come up with the right page here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 30, let's see. All right, I'm, I'm going to use two books. I'm going to use Spirit of Prophecy Book 1, and I'm going to use the Paper Ox and Prophets, and I'm going to use uh, per page 39. And this is uh, an illustration of what we're facing. Now, this is an older book. <clears throat> Satan Tremble, it's on page 29. Satan trembled as he viewed his work. He was alone in meditation upon the past, the present, and his future plans. He, his mighty frame shook as with a tempest. An angel from heaven was passing. He called him and entreated an interview with Christ. This was granted. He then related to the Son of God that he had repented of his rebellion and wished again the favor of God. He was willing to take the place God had previously assigned him and be under his wise command. Christ wept at Satan's wall, but told him, as a mind of God, that he could never be received into heaven. Heaven must not be placed in jeopardy. Mm. Now, we're, we're going to take this quotation, uh, and the same quotation, and we're going to read it in Paper, Ox, and Prophets. Now, I'm on page 39. Though he had left his position as covering cherub, <clears throat> yet if he had been willing to return to God, acknowledge the Creator's wisdom, and satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. Uh, can you contemplate this? This book says he could never be reinstated, Correct. and the later book says he could have been reinstated had he, had he repented. Uh, oh, why is these things? Uh, the plan way, way back, probably uh, within two or three or four months after the disappointment, was to lessen confidence in the, uh, in the believers in the writings of Ellen White. You know, she was about 17 years old when their first vision came. Uh, I had taken uh, the time to, uh, uh, to try to discover uh, when the messages were actually given. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very fascinating because uh, it's a record. The absolute is a record here. And we follow that record. Let's see if I can... I can get a book here. I'm not sure I have the right book here from my hand. Uh, I'm going to look on page 263. I don't have the right book. All right. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'll pass that. Uh, it's, uh, uh, is it in the office? Uh, it is. A, uh, uh, look in that second drawer, last drawer, and find a book that says 43 on it. See it? Good. Let's see if I, I, I can remember the right page. I, I hope you'll be uh, a little patient with us because we <coughs> never rehearsed this uh, very, very carefully before we started. Uh, the messages that they came, let me see if I got the right book here now. I'm on 263, and I got the right book. Amen. <laughs> uh, the question in, in most Adventist minds is the 25 
two-year prophecy. And uh, if you have this Miller book, it, it's actually it was 1842, but it has 43 on the cover. And we call it the 43 Miller book. Uh, it was published by Joshua V. Himes. Joshua V. Himes. Now, Himes did not stay faithful. Uh, he was involved in, in adultery and he lost his way. Uh, he was faithful for years, but did give it up. Uh, same thing as many of the other uh, earlier people. But I found on page 263, these, these lectures were first published in 1836. Do you know that Sister White was only nine years old? Mm, mercy. Wow. She was not a prophet. Oh. She had no experience in that first message. So, the first message uh, it was is a two five two o year prophecy. Uh, we don't have. It. Yes, we do have. It. Uh, let's see what we got. Right at the top, two five two o years, starting at six seven seven. It came down to eighteen forty three. That was first published uh, by William Miller and, uh, and his associates in 1836. By 1840, when the message was repeated, Sister White was about 12 years old, uh, still not a prophet. When, when uh, the third message, the second and third message was pro uh, proclaimed, she didn't receive that, that gift until she was about 17 years old, and that was about the end of 1844. So, uh, if, if, we, if we're careful, uh, and reading very, very carefully, uh, in your 58 Great Controversy, listen to what it says. So I saw that those who had no experience in the first and second angel's message must receive them from those who had an experience and followed down through the messages. She didn't have the experience, but she saw that you go to those that had the experience. Now, if you take your early writings book and you read on page, uh, uh, let me see, uh, uh, 188. Uh, I don't have a mark here. Uh, 188 in and, uh, and early writings, you can see the changes in this book. It says, as, as Jesus was crucified, so I saw that these messages have been crucified. They've changed that all. And as the disciples declared that there was salvation and no other name under heaven given among men, so all shows that the servants of God faithfully and fearlessly declare that those who are embraced by the part of the truths connected with the third message must gladly be embraced the first, second, and third messages as God has given them or have no part in the matter. That part in our lot is explained in the original testimony. No intelligent understanding. Uh, I've tried for many, many years uh, to interest people into reading the messages exactly as Sister White gave them, and James White, Joseph Bates, uh, William Miller, just a few, uh, just a very small handful of, of people that had an experience in these messages. Uh, Did you need early writings? Huh? Did you no, know? I, I didn't. I didn't use that. Uh, I'll have them do that. <clears throat> so these books uh, are all written by the church. Uh, they rearranged them. You're referring to the Ellen White estate? Yes, yes. Uh, I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a little study on Daniel 2. Okay. Uh, we have the we have the chart here, and uh, let me uh, get those all up here. Uh, this was the one of the first charts was was in 
Ring of Miners, uh, uh, Uriah Smith's book, 1865. We have a one copy. And if you notice, uh, 677 BC, 538, it was correct. The next two, Vigor Persia, 538, 331, he was correct. Now, notice the next one, Greece, BC 331, BC 161. That is not correct. That is not what was taught. And if you use the 161, it absolutely throws the whole thing off, and we do not have the messages that have come in order. Now, <clears throat> this one here, we made this one. Uh, several people ordered that book, so this is chart. And uh, it's almost a five-foot chart. Mm -hmm. And if you notice here, we have Babylon, 677-538, Media Persia, do you notice any difference between this chart and that chart? That chart is, it's your, your done in your revelation. You notice any, anything here? What do you notice? The hands. Listen, yeah. look, look at me. Yes. The hands, a lady called me. She said, brother, they so does that mean, oh, the hands hanging down. It has no meaning in whatsoever. Meda Persia, that was that that tamed and the Medes and the joint and the Medes and the Persian. It had nothing to do. Now when we get down to the feet and the toes, ah, my, let's see. We have a parade and let, let me get a, a a Bible verse here. I'm going to turn to uh, Isaiah. Uh, 64, and let's, let's see what I got, I think it's verse 8, yes, and now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we all are, we are agreed there, then it says, we are the clay, wow, was that ever hit me hard when I first read that? And thou art Father, and we all are the works of thy hands. Now let's just see what we can do. Let's get a Daniel Revelation here. Oh, that, that's the one. That's the one we need. Let's see if we can get back here. And... Uh, uh, I don't have I, I don't have these pages out here like we should even have either. Uh, let me see now. But we have a picture in here. Let me see now if I find a picture. Uh, it's a picture of a boy. Right here I got I got it. Yeah. You see any similarity in that picture? See that one? Yes. That's that's Daniel Revelation. That's okay. his new book. Now I, I I need to find uh, a quotation here that describes that picture. So bear with me and I can find it. Prophets and Kings, no. Let me see now. Prophets and Kings. Let's see if I got a, that picture in this book. Yeah, I have it here. Here it is. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is the uh, this is the picture here again of the of the chart, and we have the the here, but he don't have the base correctly. Uh, uh -oh. When I turn the page, I read this. Into the Roman Empire came divisions symbolized by the mixture of iron and clay. Through 
incursions of barbarians from the north and east of Europe in the fourth century and Rome, the Iron Monarchy, became broken forever. There have been mighty efforts put forth to weld the nations of Europe, the divisions of Rome, into one humongous whole by intermarriage refers to the pro as excuse me, uh, referred to in the prophecy as mingling themselves with the seed of men, but they have failed. Now, uh, I suppose we have all have read that. Uh, if they mingle themselves, uh, kings and queens, the question that I have asked myself, which one was the iron and which one was the clay? Because uh, that's what they mingle, you see. Now, I, I, I need to get a quotation here. Uh, volume 5. What's that right there? Is that? That's not, that's three, okay. one, and four. Okay, Maybe volume five. Maybe you'd like to turn this around, Mark. Huh? Maybe you'd like to turn these around so you can see these. I, I brought volume five in here, so it's here. In I got four here. One. Here, right here. That's it's volume five. Yeah. Uh, we we wasn't real too prepared with some of these uh, the quotations. This is volume five of the testimonies, and uh, let me uh, let me read something. Uh, it's on page a hundred and one. The pure and the base metal are so. Now, so mingled that only the discerning eye of an infinite God can with certainty distinguish between them. But the moral magnet of holiness and truth will attract together the pure metal while it will repel the base and counterfeit. Uh, what is base metal? Well, base metal is iron zinc, tin. Uh, in our prophecy we're concerned about base metal, iron, and the great proportion of God's people will prove to be base metal or iron. Uh, we may not like to hear that. Now let me see if, if I can come up with another, another quotation. I'm going to go off page 136. 136. Already, I'm still in volume 5, uh, an iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The very atmosphere is polluted with sin. Soon God's people will be test tested by fiery trials, and a great proportion of those who now appear to be genuine and true will proved to be base metal, instead of being strengthened and confirmed by opposition, threats, and abuse, they will cowardly take their side uh, of the opposers. Now, it's telling us that we are going to be base metal. That's, that's a Romanism. Uh, it doesn't seem now that the church is seeing a kind of flourishing. Uh, but maybe not. Uh, the report I'm getting, they're leaving by the thousands. Our people are leaving the Seventh Day Adventist Church. That's true. Yeah, and it's, uh, it doesn't make you sick. It, it makes you sick in your stomach to think that an organization that had this founding would end up uh, just absolutely cr crumbling within. Well, uh, many of God's people are going to be uh, uh, tested and approved, and they're going to prove to be the base metal. Oh, uh, my. I, 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 it does not do me uh, any proud uh, to have to say this. Uh, it 
this is a sad, sad, sad thing. Let's see if we can get, get another quotation. Job chapter 13. Let's see what we got here. Job chapter 13. And it's verse 12. Your members, excuse me, your remembrances are like unto ashes, your bodies to bodies of clay. No question. No question that we are we are the clay. Let's turn now to chapter four and verse seventeen. Chapter four, verse seventeen. Shall a mortal man be more uh, just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moment. Uh, where in the world did Uriah Smith come up with this interpretation. Uh, I think we're we're kind of looking um, for a uh, something to turn us around. Um, I wonder what will it be? Persecution? It could be. I I, I would think that the persecution would be the, the main means that God would use. But something else was going to happen, and it's prophesied. I'm going to use, again, Volume 5, your book, and I'm going to turn to page 707. And that's the Review and Herald? This is a Volume 5, the Testimonies, uh, that's their, their own book. I'll use their books as much as I possibly can. Referring now, to the corporation. I'm in on Volume 5 of your testimony. And it's 707. I have been shown that many, many who profess to have a knowledge of present truth know not what they believe. They do not understand the evidences of their faith. They have no just appreciation of the work for the present time. When the time of trial shall come, there are men now preaching to others who will find upon examining the positions they hold that there, uh, there are many things that they do not, that they, they cannot give an, uh, no answer or satisfactory reason. Unless, uh, until thus tested, they know not their great ignorance. And there are many in the church who take it for granted that they understand what they believe. But until controversy arises, they do not know their own weakness. When separated from those of, of like faith and compelled to stand alone and explain their beliefs, they will be surprised to see how confused are their ideas of what they had accepted as truth. Certain it is that there has been among us a departure from the living God and a turning to men, putting human in place of the divine wisdom. Now the next paragraph says this, God will arouse his people. If other means fail, heresies will come in among them, which will assist them, separating the chaff from the wheat. What is God going to use? Heresies. That's what's going on now. That's exactly what's going on now. Yeah. All these groups here in Oregon are all separate instead of being united together. Yeah. And they don't realize that the devil is using them. Yeah. And you know, uh, you, you think independent min ministries would catch on. Uh, yeah. But they, they, they're just as blind as a bat. You know? mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's strange. Uh, I, I very seldom ever, ever go to uh, any of the meetings. 
Now, <clears throat> they, there is a, 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 a remedy here, and it's still found in the same book. And it's 227 in volume 5. Uh, 227, okay. The Spirit of God must do its work upon the heart. All who have no, not experienced its regenerating power are chaff among the wheat. Our Lord has his fan in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. In the coming days he will discern between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So, the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit. Did you notice the word it in there? Let me read it again. All who have not experienced its regenerating power. Uh, regeneration actually is creation over again. Regeneration. And uh, uh, if we don't are recreated in our message, uh, we're going to be lost. We have to have that. Uh, if you look the word up in dictionary, it, uh, you'll find that it's a personal pronoun and it describes the third person. Uh, whole nations like Australia have given up on the three persons in the Godhead. Uh, we had a, 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 a quite a discussion on our conference call just a few nights ago. Uh, I almost had to shut the meeting off because of one, one man. Uh, let me let me get to Romans, uh, the eighth chapter. Romans chapter eight, <clears throat> and uh, I think it's verse twenty-six. Romans eight, verse twenty-six. Likewise. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, mm -hmm. biblical, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with grumblings which cannot be of it. What's happening with, among the Adventist people? A man called me just a few days ago. He said, Brother Ace, are you, um, are you keeping the Sabbath? I said, yes, I am. He said, I don't do that anymore. Hmm. Well, I said, why? Well, he says, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, we keep Sabbath but lunar, the lunar Sabbath. So I got a quotation for him uh, in uh, Spiritual Gift, Book 3 on page 90. Uh, God is, uh, Sister White records there that, the Heavenly Father has recorded the cycle of the week to the very end of time. We have six days to work, and we have the seventh day to rest in the Amen. Sabbath. You know? <coughs> so Amen. It, it's, 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 it's very startling, startling what's happening. Uh, let's see, I don't have any testimony books here, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take these. Uh, Richard, I'm going to slide more over this a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these are the original ten testimonies. And uh, one of the finest books that we have produced, uh, I'm going to show you my, my first copy of Present Truth. Now, this is what I had, all I had for years. And uh, uh, if I had one of my books here, uh, Richard, if you go back uh, three to four doors and open that uh, cabinet door, and on the left side you see a present truth up on top, up on top, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, open that, yeah. open that up, and on the right side, on uh, right at the bottom, right at the bottom shelf. That's the one, yeah. Let me see. No, I don't think you got it. No, you don't get it. It's the bottom shelf, 
The bottom shelf. The other shelf. The bottom shelf. shelf. That's the second one. Richard, start from the bottom. No. No. It's that just, one, yes. Right, on, right there. Yeah, those. Yeah, that's the it. Other one. The other yeah, one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it is it, 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 very confusing. Uh, there are just literally thousands of these books in, in, in this office. Thank you for giving that here. Now, th this is the present truth articles that we have produced. Uh, I want you to see now what I had uh, to work with for many, many years. Uh, I, we just wore it out. Uh, and probably, uh, oh, maybe 40 or so years, that's all I had. Then one day, <clears throat> a man in Canada uh, reproduced the book. So we ordered a box of them. When they came, I was absolutely shocked. The, the terrible job that they've done. So I, I said to my, my wife, I said, you know, uh, we need to do the present truth article. So we did this. Now, if, if, you, if you have one of these books, You'll see it, it's a, the quality is absolutely superb. Uh, every word is uh, readable. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. The lady that was responsible for this was present when Jane White wrote the articles in 1849. Amen. There was 11 articles, <coughs> numbers 1 through 11, uh, in the uh, Present Truth series, she she had the, all eleven articles of the Mun Brown and the 1850 reviews in the back. After her life passed away, uh, she, her daughter received her library, and she got the Present Truth articles. Well, as time went on, as ever, all all was just for all was. Now, this lady also, the daughter, she passed away, and her son received her library. Now, you, you will probably will recognize the son's name. It was F. E. Belden. Belden, he was a songwriter. Uh, and uh, years and years later, uh, when we order, had our sanitarium, uh, we got a patient in our place. Uh, she said that when she was a little girl, uh, Elder Belden would come in and want to sing a, a song that he had just written. Well, Elder Belden uh, uh, preserved this. Probably about 1950, uh, HMS Richard used it as a book of the month. Mm. Uh, I got my copy at that time. Uh, uh, it, it, it was astounding. I'm not sure I got the reproduction of this, and I may have of that original copy, but uh, that, that's how we got the book. Uh, it would have been lost if it had, had been off the church. Uh, they, they didn't have no value in these books. So, yeah. <coughs> uh, maybe, maybe I should do, use that this one to have time here. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's go to number 11. Uh, the numbers are all, all listed. Uh, let's see, number 11, and it's on page 87. The Lord showed me that the 43 chart was directed by his hand. Now, what do we have here? We have the 43 chart. Where'd the chart go? Oh, this, not this way. It's the opposite way. Huh? Yeah, so, that, that's the one. Yeah. Boy, oh, I, I was lost right there. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, the 43 chart was directed by his hand, and it says then, and no part of it should be altered, that the figures were as he wanted them, that his hand was over and hid a mistake in some of the figures, so that none could see it until his hand was removed. 
So we have a, a quotation of spherical prophecies that that chart is correct. And you notice that 2520 is right on the top of it, right on the number one. Uh, there are some that are, that are saying the mistake was uh, uh, because they didn't count the zero year. Uh, there is no zero year time prophecy. Uh, it's each day was one year. And that, that give us the 25520 years uh, in that prophecy. <coughs> yeah. Well, let me see. Let's see what we can jump to now. Let's let's cover the great controversy. All right. Okay. Well, let's do that. The, the, the great controversy is the heating message of the organization that, that our Savior put together. Then Ellen White uh, was in, was inspired, and uh, that has been a dilemma. They've come out with the, the great hope. Uh, Ted Wilson, the president of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, has endorsed it. And yet they've taken all the key points out of that burn. And uh, here most of the people don't understand that we need to get the original books. Read the original books because we are tested on the message. Uh, if you have a, 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 a new great controversy, you'll find out uh, all of the quotations that are referring to papacy have been removed. They're Mercy. all taken out. Mercy. You know, it's the same. Well, there is a message that is, is in that book, and uh, uh, let's take a, let's take a, let's see, let's we, I'll take a book here. Uh, uh, let me let me see that book here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this here is a an, an 1888 uh, Australian book. Uh, it's exactly like the 84, 85, 86 uh, American book. Uh, it seems that they they had a, a problem with the printing and the plates were worn. So they, they had new plates made. And you'll find this in a warning and its reception uh, by Whelan in short. Uh, that's another interesting article. We have reproduced that book also. Whelan and Short. Yeah, Whelan and Short. Yeah, two young ministers that came back here from the mission fields uh, to get a little more training. And uh, they wrote for their thesis, A Warning and Its Rejection. Uh, they printed 50 copies. Uh, they sent one to all the leading men and the General Conference. Well, General Conference didn't re read their book for some time. When they read it, they were horrified. So they recalled all the books. Well, they got 49. The 50th book got to Baker, Oregon, where it was in this state. And a man named Hudson had a small printing establishment. So he took the book and he republished it. Uh, that's where we got our copy. Uh, long about early in 1950s. Uh, if it hadn't been for that, we would have never had that. On page 80 on that book, you'll find uh, the story of the new plays that were being made uh, for the Great Controversy book. And uh, I think his Sister White borrowed $90,000 to have the work done. And uh, wow. when the books were, were uh, through the press, uh, they were put on the shelf, and they never distributed them, and she almost went broke. And it's, it's, it's the only place I've signed, seen it that is recorded on the, is on page 90 in that in that in that book. <clears throat> we have this call every night comes in here about this sign. Uh, all right. Uh, Uh, the uh, I was trying to get my uh, my bearings here. Uh, I need a 1911 Great Controversy. Do we have one in here?
What number? That's in 1911, great controversy. I don't think we have one. Let me hear here. Let me see if I hear. I think I can go with this one. A 383. 383. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, if we take the later book, uh, Turn that book to 383. 380, it must be underlined. Um, yes. Find it? Yes. All right. All right, it says furthermore right there. See it? Yes. Right. Furthermore. All right. Yes. Uh, uh, Richard, your wife is going to help me. Uh, you you watch this, and I'm going to read it from this book. <coughs> Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of Revelation, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. All right. Now let me read it to you. You watch. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of Revelation, in the message which is yet future, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. What did he call In a message which is yet future. Yes. Uh, that has been the, the crux of the whole message that has come through these books. Just one by one, they have, they have altered that very quotation. Uh, if I had here the, uh, the Daniel Revelation, let's see. Let's see what I can do in this book. Do you need the... Daniel Revelation books? No. He this is the Daniel Revelation. Okay. okay. And see how it uh, correlates with that. Uh, uh, let me see now. Yeah. It's on page 712. Uh, let me see what the date is. It's in 1907. 1907. Now we have another book here. Uh, yeah, it's a, Dan uh, what's that book? Uh, no, that's uh, Desire uh, of Ages, okay. Desire, uh, uh, I guess we don't have the other one here. Uh, uh, I what? thought we had a, 19, uh, a 1918 book. I guess we don't have it here. Uh, Did you get it? Uh, it here, here it says now. As we are therefore to look this side of 1844, where the previous message went forth for the announcement brought to view in this chapter. We inquire, has any such message been given from that time to the present? The answer must still be in the negative, hence this message is yet future. Now, let's use what book yet you're using. This is the, the Daniel Revelation, the very same book. And let's see what it says. We are therefore, this is 1944, we are therefore to look this side of 1844 when the previous message went forth for the announcement brought to view in this chapter. We inquire, excuse me, we therefore inquire has any such message been given from that time to the present? The answer is yes. We are now hearing the third angel's message, which is the last to be given before the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, that is not correct. Because the loud cry message of Revelation 18 is not the third angel's message. It's a, an addition to it. An addition to it. And it might be... It might be that we are going to do a half a part in that. Hello? Uh, I'm sorry, Richard. Uh, it's ringing again. Hang on. Just shut it off. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I hope we can understand how this, this message has have changed. Uh, uh, if the third message refers to the mark of the beast, uh, are we given that message? 
uh, it, it's been toned down so much that we have hardly everything, uh, hear every, anything about the, the papacy. Uh, and in fact, the, uh, the change in the Pope right now is a very mysterious move. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we do not know the truth of this, this situation. But you know, when we suddenly the old message, we come <clears throat> about 1798. Uh, the important date is 1588. We never hear about that. In 1588, there was a law issued called the Nan Law of Nance, N-A-N-T-S-E, I think it is, Nance. And uh, the, uh, the, the king of uh, France issued it, and it freed the Protestants. So the Catholics lost their power 210 years before 1798. Now, we, we just, we've lost this. It's quite ironic that uh, some, some 1798 to 2008 is 210 years. It's exactly the same distance on this side as it was from 1588. Now, how did the papacy know that? Well, it was there. And they, uh, the Pope was in the White House in the, in the United States with the President on that very day, 210 years from 1798. Isn't that something? It, it, it's astounding. It's astounding what's happening. And I don't know that we have ever heard anything about this, the situations that's happened. And of course now the, the, the papacy has changed hands. Uh, another mysterious move. Uh, I don't think we're getting the whole story. It's, it's just not the whole story. Yeah. Well, uh, if you can think of something that uh, else there, uh, let me see. I'm going to refer to the uh, the, uh, the, uh, this here book here. I'll refer to here. <coughs> uh, and, uh, the 84 Great Controversy, and it's 429 and 430. 429 and 430. We're going to have you check your book, uh, 611 and 612. <clears throat> Thus a few men will hold in check a powerful current of evil. We're t talking about some politicians in our, in our government that, that will do this. The opposition of the enemies of truth will be restrained that the third message may do its work. When the loud cry shall be given as future, it will arrest the attention of these leading men through whom the Lord is now working, and some of them will accept it and will stand with the people of God through the time of trouble. The angel who unites in the proclamation of the third message is to lighten the whole earth with his work, uh, his glory. A work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here brought to view. The Advent movement of 1840-44 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first message was carried to every missionary station in the world. And in this country, there was the greatest religious interest which had been witnessed in any land since the Reformation of the 16th century. But these are to be far exceeded by the mighty movement under the loud cry of the third message. You need to read this in, on page 611 in your 1911 Great Controversy, and you'll see the difference. Now, turning page on page uh, 130. Servants of God, with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration, 
hasten from place to place to proclaim the warning from heaven. By thousands of voices all over the earth, the message will be proclaimed or given. Miracles are wrought, the sick are healed, and signs and wonders follow the believers. Satan also uh, works uh, with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of men. <laughs> Thus the inhabitants of the earth are brought to take their stand. Now notice carefully on page 612 in the new book. The message will be carried as was the midnight cry of 1844. Not so much by argument, but, but by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. The arguments have been presented, the seed has been sown, and now will spring up and bear fruit. The publications distributed by missionary workers have exerted their influence. Yet many whose minds have been impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or even yielding obedience. Now the rays of light penetrate everywhere. The truth is seen in its clearness, and the honest children of God sever the bands which have held them. Family connections, church relations are powerless to stay them now. Truth is more precious than all besides. Notwithstanding the agencies combined against the truth, a large number take their stand upon the Lord's side. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I just read uh, page 430 in the 84 Great Controversy. And you see it says that the, the, the message will be carried as it was the midnight cry of 1844. Uh, we know that the church was not organized until about 1863. Amen. So 20 years before... Uh, the church was organized, the midnight cry was given. So that uh, was that, that means that it wasn't organized. It was it, not organized for 20 years after the midnight cry was given. So therefore, since it wasn't organized, the people got together and went forth and proclaimed the message. Yeah, it, it was the truth of Mount, wasn't it? See? Yes. Uh, and uh, we had 1 to 10 here. Uh, I don't think I have that 1 to 10 here. Uh, I didn't get that. Uh, I don't think I can find one to ten here. Uh, it's probably uh, that's a original testimony, and I don't think I've got it here. Uh, anyway, in number four, it says uh, about the uh, uh, the uh, when the Holy Spirit is poured out, uh, family ties are powerless. Did you want to get that book one through ten? Uh, well, uh, we. Uh, we could get that book if you want to get the book. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, one to ten. We don't have a one to ten here. You probably have it in the back there. Yeah. It's not over here. Yeah, I, I, I can get my book. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll let that go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't have that. Uh, that's true. I I didn't have enough time to get those books all up in, in So order since the, here. since the church was not organized at that point of period of time, that midnight cry went out. Therefore, does that play a parallel for last day events? Yeah. Uh, early writings, page one hundred and seven. It was eighteen fifty one that the church the first time it was she uh, turned land to see it. The latest in message started about 10 years before the church was organized. Mm. So you can see you and I have never lived in a time that the Holy Spirit has been present. He, it's just never, never has. Uh, in fact, his sister might mention that very thing. Uh, 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 we, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have not pre- uh, arrange this meeting here. We're just doing it just uh, as it comes along. Uh, I, uh, about 1982, uh, we had our meetings out in the building. 
and on Sabbath that people would come. And uh, a young lady, about 18 years old, she said, Brother Bates, uh, did you know that Levith Autumn was offering the original testimonies? I said, I didn't know that. So when the Sabbath was over, I called him, and somebody was in the office. And I said, you still have the original testimony? Yes, we do have. I'll buy them all. I think it was $100 for these little pamphlets. See? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, <laughs> so they didn't have a complete set, but I did buy all that they had. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine was the very first copy Louis had, a photocopy. This is all number nine. By number nine? Uh huh. And that was, uh, and then from then on, uh, we got them all except number 27. We did never ever could find number 27. But we, we, uh, we did have a man down in California, in California that said he had number 27. And he would photocopy it for us. So he did, and I offered him a set of the other books to, for him to photocopy. Uh, he photocopied and sent them to me, but it wasn't done very, very good. Yes, and we were lacking number 27. Anyway, uh, uh, Leaves of Autumn, I understand, now has quit. They have they, they turned it over. So we, uh, we have been uh, uh, blessed. Uh, by Leaves and Lawner's work for many years. Uh, he didn't agree with the way we do. Uh, that's, that's the thing the batteries going on. Uh, he doesn't he, he didn't agree with what we were doing, but that didn't make any difference because we wanted the people to have the books. And that's that's where we got them. So yeah. Let me see. I have here uh, the uh, the testimonies uh, it's very precise, and uh, when we follow the the church, 1863, uh, another five years, 1868. Let me let me read here. This is a uh, number 18, and uh, let's see what it says. And it's on page 129. Let's see if I got the right right book. Yeah. Number 18 on 129. This was in October 2, 1868, so about five, six years after. It says, The church has departed from the light, neglected her duties, abused her high and exalted privileges of being peculiar and holy in character and thereby dishonor her God like ancient Israel. They have violated their a covenant to live for God and Him only. They have joined in with the selfish and world-loving. Pride and love of pleasure and sin are cherished, and Christ has departed. His spirit has been quenched in the church. Satan works side by side, with professed believers, Christians, yet they are so destitute of spirituality and discernment that they do not detect him. Uh, five, six years after the church was organized, the Spirit of Christ has left the church. Now, can you ever remember the Spirit of Christ ever returning to the church? Now you you've gone to the the, the, the schools. Uh, you sure have learned that that the spirit of Christ has returned, but has never done. No. It's, it's never, see? It's, it's, it's <laughs> the church is uh, contradicting uh, what she's written. Yes. Now yes. what about all the quotations where it says that it would be uh, organized and corrected and rebuked from what it was doing to where it would go back and begin to do what it's doing, where the church would go through. I never found a quotation like that. I have never found a quotation. Uh, uh, in volume 8, it speaks about, um, about page 250, a place where the divine presence and glory have departed. You see? Uh, it, it's, it's just all through the books. Uh, 
Let, let me see if I can find volume or volume five again. I'm sorry, I've got so many books out here I can't even <laughs> find them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let let's use let's use a great controversy book. This is two, one and three. Yeah. Which one you want? The green one? You want? Well, I I was here. I, it's right in front of me. Okay. Uh, let me see now. Uh, Four hundred and sixteen. And remember, I just quoted the 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 uh, volume eight two fifty that the the presence and glory have uh, has we parted. Here's what it says. The truth and the glory of God are inseparable. So if God's glory departed from the church, and what else is, is departed? The, the truth. truth. It's, it's strange. The truth and the glory of God are inseparable. It's impossible for us with the Bible within our reach to honor God by erroneous opinions. That hiss is pretty hard, do not it? Yeah, it does. Because we, we have been taught error and it doesn't mix with truth. And we're, we're, we're guilty as a gore. Because yeah. yeah. I understand she reads to read, she emphasizes to read the testimonies to the church, and yet the corporation has only published nine, when yet there's a total of 30 testimonies. Why have they uh, deliberately indulged in such a false area when yet there's 30 instead of 9? Uh, the, the, the volume 5 is number 31. Now we have, we have those testimonies here. Number 31, 32, 33 is in volume 5. Uh, if you look in your volume 1 of the church's testimony book, You'll find 113 pages you just can't find in the first numbers of Volume 1. 113 pages of writing that you can't even find. Uh, the, the testimony is in from Volume 5, uh, from page 21, 21 to 98 is the 82 Batacrig letters, and we have gone through those and listed all the changes. Uh, uh, from volume 5, page 98, it's pieces and parts all through the whole book. All pieces and parts. Uh, probably the worst book to, to uh, check is in volume 6. Yeah. Would you uh, elaborate on the quotations where the Spirit has left the church uh, for the hearers to be able to recognize this key point? But yet, the, we have the church has the spirit of prophecy, the books, the message, which is the test in these last days. Uh, th yeah, the message is is the test. That's for sure. Uh, they, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, let me see. Let me uh, let me read this here. This is number four uh, of the testimonies. And I'm going to read from about 200, and uh, I think I'll start on 208, and num number four. My attention was then turned to the company I had seen before, who are mightily sh shaken. I was shown those whom I had before seen weeping and praying with agony of spirit. I saw that the company of guarding angels around them had doubled, and they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. They moved in exact order, firm like a company of soldiers. Their countenances were expressed a severe conflict which they had endured, the agonizing struggle that they had passed through. Yet their features marked with severe internal anguish shone with now with the glory and light of heaven. They had obtained the victory, and it called for from them the deepest gratitude and holy joy. The number of this company had lessened. Some had been shaken out and left by the way. There's an asterisk there. Now if you read early writings 271, 
There is no explanation. They have removed it. So let's, let's see who has been shaken up. The number of this company had lessened. Some had been shaken out and left by the way, starved it. The careless and indifferent who had uh, uh, not joined with those who prized victory and salvation enough to agonize, persevere, and plead for it, did not obtain it, and they were left behind in darkness, and their numbers were immediately made up by others taking hold of the truth and coming into the ranks. Now you might ask yourself, what is this star? What is this star? Here's what it says. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Who is left out? Laodicea? They took that out of early writing. It's not in there. Yeah. And it, it goes, it's, it gi gives an explanation in the, in, the, in the footnote in this book. Uh, I would that thou art cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That is Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Now let's go on. So is Laodicea the last church? Uh, the, the, of the seven, but it's not the remnant. Mm -hmm. So who's, who's the last church, the, 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 the There's a remnant, a church and a remnant, a church and a remnant, all the way through the seven. There was a Pergamus, Pergamus, and a Remnant, Thyatira, and a Remnant, Pergamus, and a Remnant. Uh, you can read that in the first couple of chapters in the 84 grade controversy. So we come down to uh, Philadelphia. Uh, we don't have a, a Collins Bible here. Uh, in the back of the Collins Bible, we have uh, uh, the study of the seven churches by HMS Richards. And it says Laodicea, the seventh church. Then it says the remnant church. And it's a commandment keeping church. Reve Revelation uh, 12, verse 17? Yes. Uh, uh, Richards was correct. Do you know that we, uh, we got Bibles for years? Uh, uh, the HMS Richards study help Bible. Right, right. And, uh, we bought them from the year here here about boxers. And uh, finally they notified us that uh, there was no more Bibles. Uh, we asked why, but it's, it's uh, outdated. Well, outdated means that they didn't like the atrium as Richard's study helps them back and they put new ones in, in the Bible as they use now. And I think that they're using a new international version. Well, I'd like to confirm that that uh, <clears throat> a few years, a few months back, uh, before 2013, I had talked to uh, Mr. Husky, who works for the Review and Herald. Uh, and of course, I was employed with Home Health Education Services in regards to evangelism. And I was selling Home Health Education Services. Uh, Pallets of Bibles, the Defined King James Bible. When I inquired in regards to the book of HMS Richards Jr., uh, they didn't have any more. They stopped printing them. And what they informed me was is that it was too old. The studies of HMS Richards Jr. were too old, so they replaced them by Mark Finley Study Helps. Yeah. And we found out that the Mark Finley Study Helps were corrupt. Yeah. So they were going to come out this year with the New King James Bible with no dates of the chapters of when they were written, they were going to admit that, and they were going to insert Mark Finley's study helps in the very end of the Bible. And also, the King James Bible would no longer be printed by the review. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the study helps King James Bible with the Anji White writings, that Bible specifically is being printed in Korea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Oklahoma Academy uh, is the one that is paying to get these books printed out in Korea. And that's how they're able to have, them, uh, have access to them. However, they will not sell it to the Review and Herald because uh, of a financial issue that took place that they have not paid uh, Oklahoma Academy. So what they've done here is they've, they've taken a book, completely uh, postponed printing it, 
and now they come out with the new King James Version that is corrupt in the manuscripts and they have now Mark Finley Study Helps in the back. Mm -hmm. And the chapters in there have no, no date of when they were printed. Yeah. When, when the prophet wrote the book of Isaiah, when the prophet wrote the book of uh, Jeremiah. So we're, we're losing that information. Yeah. Yeah. And that just starts the time prophecy, doesn't it? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> All right, here it goes on now. On, on page uh, 110. Uh, the honest who had been held or being prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly to hold of the truth spoken. All fear of their relatives was gone. The truth of all was exalted to them. It was dear and more precious than life. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. I asked what had made this great change. An angel answered, It is a lot of rain. The refreshing from the presence of the Lord, the loud cry of a thrown angel. Boy, you want to compare that in, in your early writings on page 271. It, it's just it's tremendous what they have done. Yeah. Yeah. So, going back to the great controversy, um, can we elaborate in regards to the markings of this book, Vern? The markings of this book? Yeah. yeah. You mean on, <coughs> on the cover? Yeah, the, yeah. the year of, the, of that great controversy? Yeah, this is in 1888 here. Uh, let me see if I, uh, this is maybe in 1911 here. Uh, this is in 1911, yes. 1911. And where was it published? Uh, First, 1907 and 1911. Okay. Yeah. And that one, what, where was that one published? Uh, I think this is a Pacific Press. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I got the right, the right title page here. No, I'm sorry. <coughs> Pacific Press. It's strange to notice that. Can you uh, point the the face cover of the book there that has the Catholic cross, yeah. so that the readers oh, can see it? That, that, that's in. I, I got that book in the office there. Oh, okay. Uh, that has the, the sign of the cross on the front of the cover. Yeah, that one has it. No, this one doesn't have. It. Okay, you want me to go get it? Uh, I don't. You want me to go get it? I'd enjoy it. Okay, uh, just hang on. Stop him. Uh, we have probably lost our, our, our interest, our, our people here. Uh, I think... You can uh, see that Catholic cross there. Yeah. In the great okay. country, 1911. Uh, we were talking about uh, the Roman Church yes, and sir. the study of the seven churches. And uh, you'll go there, uh, you find Laodicea, number seven, and then you'll see the last church. You see it? Yes. Church. The last church. Yeah, that's where Richard taught it. The last church is a commandment keeping church. Yes, that's what it said. Yeah. But you see, the church is not a commandment keeping church. They're not. Uh, for instance, belonging to a labor union is breaking all the commandments of God. Uh, what about the war question, going to war? Uh, they, they can't do that. Yeah, it's a strange thing. Uh, when I got these Bibles, uh, the last four I was able to get here in the United States uh, came from Portland, and they had four. And uh, when, when I opened this book up, and uh, you see the, the line in there, open it up to that line. See what it is. It was creased over. And there was an extra page, double over. And see what page it is. Is there numbers? No, I think you, you didn't get that right number. Okay, let me see. We have a number there. Yeah. 
It's right at the end, and it's Leviticus chapter 26. And isn't it strange that that page would be doubled over in this, this book? Mm. What's, what's Leviticus? Oh, it's... Oh, it's the two five two all years, Leviticus twenty six, and I I thought maybe I'd, I'd give this Bible to somebody else who didn't have it. My wife said, or my Mary, I think Mary said, no, don't you do that because that book was pur purposely marked to your benefit. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. so we keep that book. Okay, okay. Uh, kind of back back we lost our thought here. Uh, the changing of the message uh, happened about two or maybe say four months after this disappointment. And you'll find that in the words of Little Flock on page, bottom of page five. And you'll see why James White recorded that they begin to change the, 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 the message and the writings about four months after the disappointment. So this has, been, this has been going on a long, long time. It's changing the message. Yeah. Uh, I probably would pin this on mostly Uriah Smith. Uh, isn't it strange, though, that independent ministries today will uh, take up a a uh, vindictive spirit on the 2520 year prophecy. And we have plenty of evidence that that was the first angel's message. Now, about 1897, here's what happened. This is the first broad attack that I can find. Almost every scheme of the plan of the ages, age to come, makes use of a supposed prophetic period called the seven times, and an attempt is made to figure out a remarkable fulfillment of a, uh, by advance in Jewish and Gentile history. All such speculators might as well spare their pains, for there is no such prophetic period in the Bible. Now, <laughs> independent ministers have accepted that. Uh, 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 definition by Rory Smith. Uh, it is not correct. We do have the first angel's message as a 2520 year prophecy. Now, why did they change the Bible and take all the dates out? What do you think? <coughs> Can you prove any time prophecy without a date? No, you can't. You can't do it. No. So they removed the dates. Now then, what have they done? Uh, long about, oh, maybe uh, in the 50s or 60s, early 60s, my mother wanted to buy me a new Bible. And uh, my mother and I were real pals. So she ordered the book from uh, uh, It Is Written. And at the time, it was $33. So, she bought me one, and I, I have it in there. I got the book, and I never, ever used the book. Uh, there was no dates, and there was no margin. So, after a few months, they, she got a notice from it was written that she hadn't paid, paid for the book. But she had paid for the book. So, she thought, well, she'll just pay it again. So, she sent $33 again. Well, three or four months went by, and another uh, notice come from the company, uh, it is written, that she hadn't paid, hadn't paid for the book. Oh, man. <laughs> so she thought, well, she just sent it again. So she sent another $33. Well, you know, she, she turned the book, my $100 Bible because she actually paid for it three times, and finally she, they, they, they didn't send you in your notices. But wow. uh, uh, the book absolutely is not, uh, it's not worth anything for me. 
because no dates, no margin, no marginal references, and you yeah. can't prove that time prophecy with, with that book. Wow. <laughs> So the changes, Vern, what do we do then? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, if that, in fact, they can go on there much more here tonight, but uh, uh, uh. any questions? What about the snares of Satan in the Great Controversy? Snares of Satan? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there couldn't, couldn't be some comment on that. Uh, the first four pages were removed from the uh, 1911 and placed in the book called Testimonies to Ministers. Oh. tell you, there's nothing that they haven't done to this book. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, the, the place where you're staying up there, uh, let's see, uh, Glendale. Uh, I would, the, the church had disbanded. This was several years ago. And uh, they, I, they called me to, for a meeting. So I went up there, and there was a man there named Bill Parks, and I was wondering he might be at your meetings that you're attending up there. No, I never met him. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and Bill never believed in book changes, so I was given a review on the book, and uh, Bill stood up and he said, "I'll have you to know that I know that book better than any man in the world." Well, I thought it was kind of a, a harsh statement. So I turned to this this chapter. Mm, God honors the humble. And you know what happened in the new book? They removed the entire chapter. They removed the entire chapter? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I said to Bill, I said, uh, uh, you 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 understand that book? I said, Bill, do you ever read this chapter? He wouldn't answer me. So I asked him again, right in front of the people. I said, Have have you read this book, this chapter? And he wouldn't answer. I said, Bill, uh, you didn't read this chapter because he removed it from your book. It's all gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, the humbleness uh, among God's people is is no more. Uh, we would rather fight, uh, criticize, uh, run somebody else down, uh, whatever. But we will not sit down and just study to serve ourselves for proof. Okay. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that people could evaluate uh, the problems in these books? I would think so. Yeah, I would yeah. think so very much as well. Well, Vern, we want to thank you very much. I know it's getting late and we need to get our rest, but <laughs> yeah. we, we'd like to share very much that uh, the books were actually changed in the prophecy in uh, Testimonies, Numbers 13, page 10 to 13, in the original book. Ellen White had the dream and she had the vision. And what's so interesting is that our Savior has given her all the information that would take place in regards to the changes of these books. You're Seventh-day Adventist pastors in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I'll die a Seventh-day Adventist. But we do understand that there is much discrepancy in regards to the church going through and the church not going through. There is apostasy in the church. Even Neil Wilson knew, one of the presidents for the General Conference, knew that there was apostasy, but it wasn't as great as president of Harding College, Colin Standish, had a dialogue on. Today, in April 29th, 2013, we come to a very specific point in time. 
There are many divisions within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and there are many self-supporting ministries that are sincere, honest hearts. Independent ministries that are sincere and honest hearts. Honest hearts. But they're all at each other, and nobody's focusing on unity as one body, one faith, and one baptism. And that is my concern. I've gone through the system. I've studied criminology three and a half years, understanding how to research. I come into the church, I hear the voice of God call me, and yet I come into another dilemma, realizing that I have to study and restudy. And I stand back and I say to myself, don't be so concerned because Alan White says that we would have to study and restudy. Vernon Bates has taken 30, almost 63 years of his time studying, researching, buying the original books out of his own pocket, and building what he has today is the, uh, the originals and authentic books, and as well as the books that the conference prints. They have lied to you and to me, and that is a sin. Now, President Prescott, it's hard to say if he will be in heaven, because he also wrote the letter to Willie White indicating that he was aware of all the mistakes in the Spirit of Prophecy books. We have that letter. But one important thing is this, is that your children and our children are going to take up the work. But we need to be on solid ground to be able to give the tr correct truth to them. To them. There are pastors out there going to Andrews, La Sierra, going to the school, Pacific Uni College, Weimar Institute College, Harlan College, uh, Steps to Life Ministries is out there with m much uh, truth, and, and of course, other areas that they have problems. But today we stand with a big dilemma. Do are you, or do you carry the correct books? Do you carry the correct general conference information, or do you carry the original books that were written by Alan G. White? That is our study tonight in part one. Part two will begin tomorrow, and we would like to begin with a clear understanding that we're not against the people. It is the devil that has caused this entire mess. It's the devil's fault. And since we live in the Day of Atonement, we must realize that judgment is coming to us and that we are going to be found wanting or we're going to be found written in the Book of Life. And I, for one, definitely want to live and have his character. Nobody's perfect. This is not judgment going towards the church. No. This is what we have to do today. As she said, we're going to have to study and restudy. Our test as a people, April 29, 2013, is that the test is in the message in the original books. The original books. Number one, we have the 1858 Great Controversy. That was never infiltrated. We have the 1885, excuse me, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, and the 1911. And the new one that just came out, while Neil Wilson, uh, Ted Wilson is president, the Great Hope. They've stricken everything that we've come in for in regards to stripping the character of the Vatican Church and what it really is. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a dilemma, a very serious dilemma. And everybody's against each other because they have correct books and they have incorrect books. And we must return back to these original books and restore the breach that has been torn apart. This night we like to end in, in prayer. And uh, I'd like us for those who are able to kneel as we close in prayer. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, we want to thank you so much this evening. I want to thank you for Brother Vern Bates. We ask for your blessings upon him, his family, your ministry, their, their work that they're doing in regards to the original books. We also ask for healing for Vern Bates' wife, Anna Bates. And we thank you for the time that we spent here and most of all, we ask for your blessings upon us. And we thank you for the life you've given to us. And we ask that our names be written in the book of life and blood out of the book of iniquity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.